Okay, for this project, I'm using a size I, 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, and I'm using just regular Red Heart Super Saver yarn. It's a four ply worsted weight acrylic. So, first, you want to start with a slip knot. And then I'm going to make a chain of four. And then I'm going to slip stitch in the beginning chain to form a ring. And then I'm going to start with a chain three. And that chain three is going to count as a double crochet. So including this chain three, I want to have a total of 12 double crochets. So I'm going to do the rest of my double crochets through the center of the ring. So I'm going to yarn over and go through and do 11 more double crochets. So I'll have a total of 12 with that chain three. And then I'm going to pull my tail real tight and that will make my circle smaller. And now I want to slip stitch into my beginning chain 3. And that will close that round off. Just like that. So now I want to work um, some ruffles around it so I can make the flower. We're going to be working in the um, the front loops only of these stitches to do the roughly part. So what I want to do is I just slip stitched into the chain three so now I want to go over to the next stitch. I want to slip stitch into the next stitch but I'm just going to slip stitch through the first loop of it. Oh. Maybe. There. I'm going to slip stitch through that. So now I'm where I want to start making the ruffles. So I'm going to chain three, which is just counting as a double crochet. Now I'm going to go around in each loop, the front, each stitch, the front loop only though of each stitch. And I'm going to put four double crochets in each stitch, the front loops only. So I'm going to go back into the same stitch that I just slip stitched into and I'm going to do three more. So I'll have a total of four counting that chain three. So there's two, three, four, and then I'm going to go to the next stitch right here and work four double crochets only through the front loop. So I'm going to go in and do four double crochets. If you wanted your um, the ruffles on your flower to be extra ruffly, you could always put five double crochets in there. But I'm going to put four in mine. And sometimes when you're just working in one loop, it tends to stretch it. But when I go in like that, I like to hold on to it down here and then complete my double. That way it doesn't stretch it quite so much. Then I'll grab it. That's just a little tip that works for me. Sometimes working in one loop can really stretch it out. Then I'm going to go in the front loop of the next stitch. And I'll go through and then I just kind of grab it down here to hold it so it don't stretch. And then I finish it out. Like this. And I want to go around the whole piece here, doing four double crochets in the front loops only of these stitches. Okay, I made it back around, and I went ahead and worked my four double crochets in the front loops of every stitch. Now what I want to do is slip stitch into my very first chain three, and that will close that round off like that. And that's what we have so far. 
So I'm going to go ahead and clip my yarn here so I can start fresh in a different spot. And I'll go ahead and hide this tail a little bit later. So now I'm going to start again with the slip knot. And now we're going to be working in the back loops that we didn't go into before. Here's the back of my project and here's the back loops. You can see them. So you can start anywhere that you want. Kind of fold these ruffles down so you can see. And go ahead and go into the back loop of any one of the stitches. And pull through that slip knot on your hook. And do a chain three, which is going to count as a double crochet. Now this time around we're going to put two double crochets in the back loop of these 12 stitches. So you'll need to have a total of 24 double crochets at the end of this round. But we're working in the back loops since we worked in the fronts before. So I'm going to go ahead and go right back in the same stitch and do another double crochet. And then I'm going to just keep going around working in the back loops. putting two double crochets in each stitch. And that's what it's looking like. So what we're doing is we're just basically increasing a circle. The normal way we would increase a circle. I'm just adding these ruffles to it as we go. So I'm going to continue going around putting two double crochets in each stitch until I get back to the beginning and I should have a total of 24 double crochets. Okay, after you made it all the way back around and you have your, you counted and you have your 24 double crochets just go ahead and slip stitch into the beginning chain three to close that round off and now this again we want to do the same thing that we did here it create another ruffle so we're going to start off by slip stitching into the next stitch but in the front loop only like that chain three is going to count as a double crochet and I want to go back through the front loop of this stitch again and do three more doubles for a total of four double crochets. So there's four in that one. Now I'm just going to work along in the front loops only again, putting four double crochets in each stitch all the way back around. Okay, I made it back around again after that second row of ruffles. And again, to end this round, I want to slip stitch into the very first chain three. And I'm going to go ahead and clip my yarn again so I can start fresh with a new round. And I'll hide that tail later. And that's what we have so far. It's really pretty cute. It's turning out pretty good. Besides all these tails hanging, that looks like a good job for my husband. He can hide all these tails for me. That's his job. So now I'm going to start out with a slip knot again. And I'm going to do another row of double crochet on the back, working in the back loops. So I'm going to start anywhere that I want in any one of these back loops. So go ahead and fold these down so you can see. So go ahead and pull through that slip knot on the hook chain three and that's going to count as a double crochet so now we're going to continue increasing the circle 
So this time around, what we want to do is that counts as our first double crochet and working in the back loops, you want to go to the next and put two double crochets in that stitch. So it's one in the first one and then two in the next. And then you want to put one in the next one and then two double crochets in the next. So that's going to be the pattern this time around. Made it back around after that row of double crochets and you need to have a total of 36 double crochets at the end of this round. Go ahead and slip stitch into your chain three to close that round off. Now I'm not going to do another row of ruffles. I'm going to, I think mine's big enough for the bag that I'm going to make. But you can definitely do as many rows of ruffles as you want. You just continue doing it the way that I showed you. But now I'm just going to do straight, in, straight uh, rows of double crochet and just uh, increase in the circle as I go. So now I'm going to chain three. That counts as my first double crochet. So I'm going to go into the next double crochet and do another one. So double crochet, double crochet, and in the next one I'm going to put two double crochets in it. Two. When I put two double crochets in one stitch, that's called an increase stitch. So that's just what I'll call it from now on. So the next stitch is going to be a double crochet, and the next stitch a double crochet, and then the next stitch is going to be our increase. Two double crochets in the same stitch. And then double crochet, double crochet, and then another increase. So you just want to repeat this pattern all the way back around to the beginning. Okay, I'm coming to the end of this row. And at the end of every row, you know that you counted right if your last stitch is an increase stitch. It'll be like this every round. Your last stitch should always have the two double crochets in it. And then you want to slip stitch into your beginning chain three, close that round off, chain three again, counts as our first double crochet. Now we want to do another double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, and then we do our increase stitch. So this time around it's going to be three double crochets in a row and then we do our increase stitch. This is how it's going to go from now on until you get um, the size that you want and I'm not sure how many rows I'm going to do but like this round has three double crochets in between the increases. The next row will have four double crochets in between the increases. The next row will have five double crochets in between the increases and so on and so on and that's how you keep increasing a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and work on mine and I'll let you know how many total rounds that I do. Okay, I got my piece done here, and I did a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, rounds, counting the very first one. And you can always make yours bigger if you want. And then I made another one exactly the same, except for I didn't put the flower on this one, because I'm going to make this my back. And it too has seven rows. But if you want to put the flower on it, you want the front and the back to be the same, you go ahead. You can do it however you want. But now I'm going to make the side piece here. And you want to start with a slip knot for this. You want to do a chain of 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Now what you want to do is, in the third stitch from the hook, we don't count the one that's on our hook, you want to, the third stitch, just go in it, drop a loop. Yarn over, go back in the same stitch, drop a loop. Yarn over, the same stitch, drop a loop. And you'll have six loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all six. Chain one to lock. 
Now you want to skip a stitch and go into the next. Go into it, drop a loop. Yarn over, go in, drop a loop. One more time, yarn over, go in, drop a loop. Six loops. Yarn over and go through all six. Chain one to lock. So we're just creating these little poofy stitches. Skip a stitch and go into the next. Go into it. When you go in into a new stitch, you never yarn over. So go into it, drop a loop, and then we'll yarn over. Go back in, skip a stitch, and we'll go to the next one. Six. Chain one. Skip a stitch, go do and do the little poof stitch into the next. Chain one and then skip a stitch and should be at the end. Do the last little poof stitch in your last stitch like that and then you chain one to lock it now you want to at the end of every row you want to chain one and turn again so you chain one to lock it and then you chain one again and we go directly and start doing a stitch right here in this kind of big spot so we start by doing a little poofy stitch like we have been doing Oops. Six loops, yarn over and go through all. Chain one to lock it. And then now we're just going to always be working in these little big stitches beside each poof stitch. So we'll just come right over here and go into this one and do the little poof stitch until you got your six loops. Yarn over and go through all of them. Chain one to lock. And then you jump over right here beside this in that big space right there. Do your poof stitch. So this is really easy to do once you get the hang of it. And then jump over here to this spot right here and do the same. And this is what I'm going to be doing rows of for the um, side that I'm going to sew my, on my bag. And you just do this to the end. I'll go ahead and finish it out. And when you get over here, you'll see your spot at the end. My yarn's all tangled up. And at the end, you just chain one to lock your last boost stitch, chain one again, and turn. And then you just start right here and continue doing your poof stitches in these little spots beside each poof stitch. And you just keep going back and forth doing that. And I already did mine a little while ago. So, I got my big piece made. And I did a total of 42 rows of the puff stitches. And now I'm going to sew it together with my two pieces. So I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook. And I'm just going to sew it together right quick. Um, it's going to be sewn like this. And then you bring the other piece on and sew it the same way. So I'm just going to start with this piece. And I'm going to sew it with the good, where the, the good side is going to be showing. So here's my good side. If you have a side that you like better. So when I sew it, the good, the seam's still going to be on the outside. I'm going to sew it using slip stitch. And you can just start anywhere on this piece that you want. I'm going to start up in the corner of my piece and then on any stitch along here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull through that slip knot that's on my hook to start with. 
and now I'm just going to go along matching stitches, slip stitching it together. So on these kind of stitches you're not really, they'll see too well, but I'm going to go in the top of the, the very top loop, two loops of the puff stitch that's on the end, and then the next stitch over here, slip stitch, and then there'll be a stitch here, slip stitch, I'm at a puff stitch here on the end, so I'm going to go through the very two top loops of it, like that, and then the next stitch on this piece, slip stitch, and then right here, the in between the puff stitches, there'll be a stitch, just go right through that, stitch here, and I'm just going to do this all the way around, slip stitching this on slip stitching it on and then what I'm going to do is take my other piece this will be on like this once I get it all the way sewed on it should go around it I'm going to take this one with this side facing me and sew it on the same way okay I got mine sewed up um, both pieces sewed on and I actually had to go back and add more rows of this because I didn't think that I had enough so instead of doing 42 rows I did 54 I added another 12 rows and you can do more or less too just depending on how big you want your opening to be now um, handles you can add any kind of handle that you want you can add one long one two short ones you can buy handles whatever you want to do but for my handles if you want to do what I'm doing I made these puff stitches again but in the beginning, I just did a chain of seven, and then I just did my puff stitches back and forth. That way it made a shorter row. So I just did the seven, and I just um, went ahead and did my puff stitch in the third stitch from the hook, and I just continued across, just like we made this. Really easy. And I did 35 rows, but you can do as many as you want. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of take my yarn needle and fold it in half and put a few stitches down the seam to make it thicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some get that out of the way. Take a piece of this yarn and my yarn needle. And I left long tails on each end. That way I could sew it onto the bag that way. But I'm just going to take it and fold it in half. And I'm just going to put a few stitches all the way down the whole piece. Oh. And you don't have to do this. Just like this. I'm not going to stitch over. I'm going to stitch side to side. That way there ain't no... You won't be able to see the stitches really. And again, this is not anything that you have to do. I just doing something different and make the handle look a little bit uh, thicker, kind of. So I'm just going to do this all the way down. And I think I'm going to make two handles the exact same. So I'm going to have two uh, short handles on my bag. But if you choose it differently, you go right ahead at your bag. You're the artist, you do whatever you want. I'm just here to give you a basic idea. <laughs> That's what my job is. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this all the way down. See, it just makes the handle look a little thicker. It's kind of interesting. Okay, I got my handle sewed on. What I did is I just sewed them up one in each corner with my yarn needle and that's it that's all I did um, that's all I'm gonna do one thing I would probably do is I mean you don't have to but I'm not gonna do it but go around the top here with single crochet I would do it but I this this is literally all the red yarn that I have left I mean it took every little piece um, 
So I'm just going to leave it. But if you want more of a cleaner edge, you can definitely do that. And um, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. I hope you're able to follow along okay. If you make this bag, I'd love to see a picture of it. You can post it on the Bag of Day Crochet Facebook page. I'll put a link below. And don't forget to check out all my other tutorials. And until next time, have a good day.